to our Big Brother Canada recap show. We have such a great show for all of you today. We have a special guest. Spoiler alert. Boop. It's going to be Christine. But if you guys are watching this back later, uh, don't forget, give us a five-star rating if you are listening or watching in iTunes. If you are watching on YouTube, you can click on these buttons below. Thumbs up and subscribe. That's a great way to support our shows. Another great way to support our shows is to go check out yourrealityrecaps.com slash Canada. We need your guys' help to get us to the backyard. This is fun and all being in person with Christine, but we want to be with her in the backyard on finale night. So go check out yourrealityrecaps.com slash Canada uh, if you want to get a live stream uh, for the interviews on finale night and uh, help us get there. But without further ado, shut up, Eric. We need to get to who you all want to hear from as we recap this week. And it is... Hi, Christine! How are you doing? I'm doing amazing, thank you. How are you guys? We are great. Dana, how are you doing on this I fine am, Friday? I am great. I am great. Yes. I. It, we, was, it was a good night last night in Big Brother World. It was a very good night in Big Brother Girl, uh, in Big Brother Girl or World. Um, <laughs> it was a good night for Big Brother Girls because none of them left the house. This is true, Dana. This is true. And we are going to, you guys know the deal, touch on the highlights from this week. But we're also going to be taking your questions for Christine. So go ahead, leave them in the chat room if you guys have them. Or you can tweet us them at uh, Reality Recaps and we can pull them up however you want to do it. But I kind of think, let's just touch base with you really quick, Christine. How have things been uh, since you've left the house? Uh, well, the first couple of days, it was weird. You know, you have to kind of deprogram yourself from being in the Big Brother house. Um, but it's been fine. It's been great. I met the whole Vancouver crew. We had a night out. It was amazing. I loved everybody there. We had so much fun. Um, looking forward to talking to uh, Dallas. And I uh, was hoping it was going to be Maddie so we could party down this weekend, but whatever. <laughs> um, it's been really good. It's been fun. Okay, okay. okay. Well, Dana, where do you want to start? Um, I was kind of wondering, like, I mean, you were there for a couple of weeks. Have your thoughts on anybody changed now that you've had a couple of weeks to, like, watch them move around the house in ways you never got to see before? Like, are there people that you're like, oh, I didn't like, and now you're like, oh, okay, or, like, vice versa? Um, I pretty much still like everybody the same as I did before. Um... Maybe my rooting has gotten different. Like before, I didn't care who won. Now I now I really kind of care. Um, I feel like Joel would would I'd like to see him take it. Um, anybody else, I don't really care still. <laughs> oh, oh, this is gonna be a fun show. Uh, so, what were your thoughts on this double eviction? Like that happened last week. Was that would, would you have been down for that when you were in the house? Or um, I mean, when you're in the house, you have to be down for everything. That's the way it is. And that's, you accept it, and no problem. When you're out of the house, it's much easier to bitch about stuff. So <laughs> outside the house, I'm like, nah, didn't like that. I thought it was kind of lame, fake eviction. You know, now just some from circumstance, they get a chance to get back in. Me and Dallas, you know, we don't. So it kind of sucks. I didn't like it. All right. I think that's, yeah, that was a crazy. I, you know what? I think they kind of did that because of the holiday weekend, and they just didn't want to do press. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I or think if I was in the house, I'd be more angry about it. Be like, oh my god! And like, because I mean, to find out that someone's coming back in the game. Yeah, especially be, those two. We've had enough of them, have we not? Even though I'd like to see more girls back in the house, I'm still like Kelsey, Lavita. They've had their chance. They've had their turn. I'm over them, both of them. <laughs> So you, um, so you are not a fan of people going back into the game now at all. I mean, I guess it has to happen sometimes, but I'm not a fan. I've never been a fan of people going back in because it's always so random. What people do you choose? You know, is it fair 
I don't know. Nothing's really fair, but I just don't <laughs> like it. So uh, that's what I was going to uh, ask you. We have had debates on this on the show. The chat room has weighed in. Where do you fall on? Do you think it is fair that people get to see what's going on in the house, hear certain conversations, and then get put back into the game, either one, um, kind of really having a tool that they can use to... I, just, I feel like it's an unfair advantage. But how do you feel about the fact that they're getting to watch events, hear events, and then get to go back into the house? I am a total agreement with you. I feel like it's completely unfair, but... It's, you know, all is fair in love and big brother. So you can't really say it's fair or it's not fair. It's the game and that's the way it is. And they just got lucky and it sucks for everyone else. If you, if you had to pick, if you had to pick, you were forced, gun to your head. They're calling you up on the phone. They're like, Christine, it's your choice. You get to pick who goes back in. Who are you putting back in? Kelsey or Levita? Back in. That girl earned it. She works hard. She's manipulative. She's like talked to everybody. She schemed the most. Even though I don't like her, I feel like she deserves it better than uh, Kelsey. Kelsey's just a flirt, whatever. She's okay too, but she's pretty smart in the game. But I feel like Levita earned it more. I'd put Levita back in. Uh, like, I think if Levita goes back in, we'll see something different like if Kelsey goes back in she'll just go back into her threesome with Raul and Jared and it'll be like she never left the game you put Levita back in and God knows what's going to happen I agree Levita is more exciting I definitely agree. Uh, yeah, well, okay, I definitely agree, but they both kind of have a plan of what they want to do when they go back in, and I know we're kind of jumping around to last night's show, but it did not look like Jared was happy at uh, uh, Kelsey coming back in. Agree. He didn't look very excited because he's thinking the same thing. Here we go again. She's going to latch on to me and Raul. It's going to be the same old, same old. I got rid of her, and now I have to deal with her again. I don't think he's very happy about it, and I don't blame him. Well, that and he's also been kind of cozying up to Cassandra and she's been watching that. So can you imagine if she goes back in the house? <laughs> she's like... And I'm sure the rash just started clearing up. So <laughs> <laughs> comedic recaps, everyone. Uh, com oh, I forgot to tell you, Christine. We do comedic recaps. <laughs> so now that I know, it's open season. It's open I'm, season. I'm the serious. Eric's the funny. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right, Dana, where do we want to start um, on uh, uh, with our recap? We'll just touch on some of the points, yeah, I kinda think. Yeah, we're going to touch on um, Tim. And the, I mean, last week we kind of talked about it, but it was spoilers, so some people might have not wanted to see that. So let's kind of go back into um, Tim winning that blast from the past, HOH. They brought in a chest of goodies that they had to kind of look at and watch and I mean, from the edit on TV, it just kind of looked like no one really, except for Mitch, who was like, you just don't put a chest in the house for nothing. No one else kind of seemed to like clue in that you might need this information for later. But then when they did the quiz, everyone did pretty well on it. And there was a four-way tie between Tim, Cass, Mitchell, or Mitch and Jared. Mm -hmm. And now we have our first non-Canadian HOH and Tim. Yeah. Were you excited with a Tim H O H Christine? I wasn't overly excited. I mean, it was going to happen eventually, but whatever. I mean, I really liked him as a person, but as a player in the game, I'm not fond. I'm not down with the twist. I'm not down with the internationals being in there. They're just stirring up the crap. And quite frankly, I'm getting bored. <laughs> Oh, you didn't eat like you didn't love a Nikki in the house. Is it? Are we not understanding? Because I love her. Like when she's I like, love Nikki too. Okay, I love, love Nikki, love Nikki, love Nikki. She's so much fun in the house. But it's a Canadian show. What are we thinking here? I don't want them to win. I don't want to see them even get second prize. <laughs> That's just my opinion. I'm Canadian, damn it, and I'm going to stay that <laughs> loyal to the end. <laughs> yes. That's why I'm down here in this little corner. <laughs> I'll let you Canadians stay so, over there. I've kind of been asking this of every house guest that we kind of interview because I, I mean, I love watching Nikki and like her outbursts and her tantrums and everything are like amazing for us to watch. But what is that like for you to have to endure her wandering around the house? Like, ah, I want chocolate. Where's my vodka? Difficult? Like, I mean... Especially for like an older person, like I don't have time for that garbage. 
<laughs> it's it's it was pretty intense at first. Everybody just wanted to like get rid of her, strangle her, suffocate her with a pillow, whatever it took. But now when you get to know her, she she's just a sweetheart. She's a really good person inside and and that to me always makes it worth living with somebody's uh, craziness if they're deep down good person and she really is and she's so much fun I mean you never know what she's gonna do it's hilarious she's always freaking out she's entertainment period oh yeah she's <laughs> she's adorable I mean this I think like there's always like the weekly Nikki face and I, I think I gave you the picture Eric the she almost drowned in the hot tub and so she came out of it and she's looking like a raccoon and oh my gosh like the, the faces she can pull yeah i um i forgot to pull up pictures i'll do that now cuz <laughs> i'll do that in one second um because i have a serious question christine we also have serious questions we have to ask you during this show as well. We're going to ask the hard-hitting questions. Now, I probably should know the answer to this, but I have a horrible memory. Are you in a relationship with anyone? Zero zip, zilch. Perfect. Did you watch our Big Brother? The um, Do you watch, have you seen any of the American Big Brother seasons? I have. But it's been a while. So, like, Where are you going with this, Eric? Well, do you know who Amanda Zuckerman is from Our Big Brothers? Just pretend like you do. It's fine. Okay, uh, yes. okay. Amanda was a very popular player on uh, Our Big Brother uh, like two or three seasons ago. Anyway, her father is in the chat room and would like you to know, hi, you look really good. Hi, Father. Thank Ro you. Ro there you go. There you go, Robert Zuckerman. There you go. So that was my serious oh, question. Boy. This could be magic. It could be magic. <laughs> um, so not, so not um, a fan of the Tim, want to keep it Team America. All right, Dana, go. Well, Canada. I go. I'm, team Canada. What did I say? America. Oh, all right, Team Team Canada. Sure, that's good, too. <laughs> okay, so I'm... Since you don't like Tim, I'm, I'm going to assume that you were not a fan of the gummy bear strategy that he employed this week. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love Tim as a person. He's one of the people I'm going to get in contact with after the show and probably stay in contact with him as a person. Love him. Just bored of him on the show. That's all. As far as his gummy bear thing, hilarious. It's <laughs> totally Tim. Smart. He got everybody's information out of them. Uh, except Dallas, which was smarter, and he didn't give him any, which I thought was great, but it, in the end, shot him in the ass. So um, I just think Tim's hilarious. I mean, his antics are as funny as Nikki's. Um, yeah. It's just like a cheeky little 12-year-old. Yeah, he's like a little toddler running around that house. And it's just like, you just never know what he's going to in Like the little twinkle in his eye when you know he's yes. going to do something really weird. So where would your gummy bears have gone? If you had to walk up into that HOH room, where would, your, where, would you have given Dallas what he wanted in given Dallas your gummy bears or would you have gone your own way? Um, I never even thought about it till now. Um, what was the concept? You give gummy bears to who you want out. Yeah, right? you got to, you got five gummy bears and you could split them up between two people. So you could give like one person one or two and then the other person three. Yeah, I probably would have, um, hmm. I probably would have rolled it for one. He would <laughs> probably three gummy bears. And maybe Jared too, just because I, I would probably be on Dallas and Maddie's side and Ramsey. Yeah. So, like uh, maybe if you had been in that house, you could have like talked some sense into him because like everyone else was like wondering why didn't Ramsey, Dallas, and Maddie in like the middle kind of get together and be like, okay, who do we want out? Let's give all our gummy bears. Like everyone just kind of went in there, individually. Like, yeah, and just kind of went, okay, this is what I'm thinking instead of collaborating together. And then maybe so Dallas. I think that's what Tip did on purpose. He 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 did that on purpose. He got people off guard. He didn't tell them what he was doing until they didn't know at the last minute. And um and I think that was his kind of he was smart on that point. Um sorry, I just got distracted there. Um but it's yeah, you know, they should have collectively got together and said, let's get the brothers out. I mean, come on. Those brothers need to go. There's two of them, get them out while there's one vote and not two votes. Let's get real. They yeah, should have yeah. deliberately gotten together and said, brothers out. Exactly, exactly. Those brothers. But they're so much fun to watch. Like, Are they? I don't find them fun to watch. I, oh, I do. I do. I like... I find Nick fun to watch. Sometimes he's not they'll... anymore, so it's not as romantic. 
Yes. Well, we, I can, well, I'll ask another serious question though. Hold on. First, here is Tim uh, <laughs> with the gummy bears and the way they all uh, kind of played out in this gummy bear scenario. However, I am in love with the brothers. Now, here's my question. I mean, physically. <laughs> I need to know, serious question, do you like the girl face brother better or the monkey face brother better? I don't know what their actual names are. Dana, which is which is girl face? Girl face is Phil and monkey face is Nick. Okay, so girl face is Phil and monkey face is um, <laughs> Nick. So oh God. Do, uh, which one, if you had to pick, are you going to go with? You have to work with one of them. I would work with Nick. Phil is very difficult to work with. He doesn't say anything about anything. He's like a brick wall. And he's very defensive and kind of snip snappy sometimes. So although I like Phil, we were bed buddies the whole time. Um, not so much. I would work more with Nick. He's just more easier to talk to and to get information from. And he'd be easier to sway as well, I think. <laughs> mm. All right, go ahead, Dana. All right, so let's move, let's move on to the weekly cast. I mean, this is a Big Brother Canada thing that happens. So this week, what was a game of Big Brother says? And so you must have been happy to watch Phil like burn his tongue off with the ghost pepper, and then have to lick Nick's armpit. <laughs> oh, my. that was so gross. And then like Nick and Matt or Mitch and Maddie change clothes. Yeah, Which and then. Cassandra has earned my respect taking a body shot off of Dallas. I'm just like, whoa. Uh, horrible. It's totally disgusting. I don't care if it's alcohol. I would never drink anything out of anybody's belly button, let alone Dallas's belly button that is, let's just say, a little bit deeper in. <laughs> Beyond that, me and Maddie used to play a game in the house. Would you? Would you rather... And I think one of those things could be, would you rather take a shot from Dallas's belly button or live a week with LaVita? I don't know which one I would choose. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Dallas. Don't get me wrong. I love Dallas. And right. like, I mean, I tweeted last week. I'm like, when Dallas is talking and his clothes are on, I'm like happy as a clam. When that guy is walking around, but half naked and talking, I'm just like, I need you to stop, <laughs> please. Like, put on some pants. Like, he's got the boy's got no shame. God bless him. He's got no shame. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. <laughs> I like that about him because I yeah, he like he just him. don't doesn't care. And I mean, I I love that about him too. But sometimes you're just like, dude, like I don't know how. Like, there was one scene where him and Tim are having like this deep conversation about strategy, and he's in his underwear and you can very clearly see things and it's just like how is Tim having this conversation without like dying like I I couldn't I, <laughs> I'd be like you need to go close, get some clothes on and then come back in and we can have a conversation because I can't I can't look at this like it's well, when you live in the house part of Dallas's package is where what comes with it we're all used <laughs> So it's all good. <laughs> I'm so sure I tweeted a picture of that. Well, I'm pulling it up. Christine, we are getting a lot of questions in the chat room. Uh, right now, I see Bigzilla is asking it. Virgo Baker is asking it. They want to know, yeah. is it true that you hid food in the house and left it behind so that it would get all moldy and smelly? <laughs> okay, half truth. Yes, I did hide food because those beasts were eating all my food. I'm vegan, so it was very hard for me in the house. I felt like I was on slop 24-7. They were constantly eating my food, so I'm like, screw you guys. I'm hiding this. I'm stashing it. I told Maddie where the stash was. She was the only one because we were both kind of eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And um, it did go rotten, and the fact that they found it when it was rotten just made it so much better. Yeah, there's, there's, I, I was watching the feeds at that point, and they were like, oh my God, he's like, we found her melons and... <laughs> Hiding behind the cleaning supplies, and they were rotten. I love that they found it disgusting. And, oh my God. and Tim hid that <laughs> tongue. Tim, I watched Tim hide the tongue on the feeds in like the glass jar in the living room or whatever. I don't even know if that's been found yet. It has been found. It was starting to get rank. I think they took it out a week after. Oh, uh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, go ahead, Dana. What time are you talking about? The tongue. They had the was what was that from? What animal? 
Uh, the cow. It was from the cow. So yeah. they had the tongue and they hid it because Tim hid it and he hid it in the center glass thingy in the I living room. I let, I let Tim lick me with the, with the tongue because it was our victory tongue. That was the tongue that got us so we were not a have not for the week. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh, that was the food you, oh my god, now it's going to clear. Yes, because we were doing the balloon toss, <laughs> yeah. and okay. Tim looked at me, he goes, the t- he had those eyes, he's like, the tongue? I said, go for the tongue, I know you've got it in your eyes, you can do the tongue, and that was what the winning point was for us, so the tongue was our friend, and disgusting. Giselle in the chat room wants to know, if you were put back in the house right now, who is your number one target? I say the brothers. I want them out. I want them out. I want them out. I want them out now. <laughs> I want them out before Jerry so they could come on and talk to us. Now I don't want them out anymore because I won't get to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, we got one more week. I think we have one more week. Oh, well, that's true. Well, uh, oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Was I allowed to say that? I don't know. If I wasn't, <laughs> surprise. Um, I'm just going by, like, a numbers thing. I think there's one more week. Right. Like, just one more week. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Just so hopefully it's week. them, the little buggers. I don't really think they're playing the game that well. I don't think they deserve to be there. Get out. I think Phil needs to be nicer to Nick. That's what I it- Oh, my God. I won't even go into it. <laughs> oh no go into it go brother, into were it you not like be nice to your brother like i would have lost my mind he acts like his freaking dad he's constantly like phil i mean nick do this do that you can't dress like this you can't dress like that stop saying this don't make that move it was really out of control like i was you know phil calm down you're not his parent you're only a year older than him if that like nine months for god's sakes he was out of control with it, I felt. I was always That's saying that, like, Nick level. and Phil, like, when they were, when they go into the diary room to, like, cast their vote or something, if I was, like, Nick, I would, like, run in there and just, like, not even wait for Arissa to talk. Be like, I vote to make the law so that you can say what you want to say. And then Phil would just go. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And Nick takes it. I don't know why Nick takes it. It's the weirdest thing I've seen. But I'm sure one day they're going to have a fist fight about it, and it's going to be over. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. It could be over a girl. You never know. You never know. <laughs> very well, over. well, they almost got it with Maddie, and that was a bit mm-hmm. much. But so we got Dallas and Ramsey as our two highest koala bear recipients on the block, and um, we talked about this a little bit last week in their spoilers section. How Ramsey like burst out crying and. Mm-hmm. We start to see the budding showmance of Ramsey and Maddie now. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this one. Well, let me Christine. All right, Christine, <laughs> we're gonna give it. we're gonna give you the floor to talk about it. And love and kindness in the chat room wants to know, um, do you find Maddie abrasive and negative? So you can kind of work that in into the Ramsey and Maddie All topic. Right. Oh, and uh, I think she they has a she has a boyfriend apparently on the outside. We work that one in too. You might know. Well, okay. I like Maddie. We got along really well in the house. We have a lot of similarities. We're both abrasive and kind of negative and bitchy. And we got along that well. She's just 20 years younger, so she's got some learning to do about how you can be bitchy and have people still accept you in society. She's learning that, <laughs> hopefully. Um, she can be too much. I've tried to tell her, you know, you can say certain things, but you can't say certain things. And you know, it's it's okay to have an opinion, but don't be a total bitch about it, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I tried to learn her a little bit. Um, she does have a boyfriend. She says she's in love with him, and they're wonderful and kind. But she was, if I was her boyfriend, I'd be right pissed had I seen what she was doing with Nick. And now she's flipped over to Ramsey, and I don't get it. I don't like it. Um, I'm going to have to talk to her about that as a mom and say, what are you thinking there, young lady? But, I mean, it's her life. She's doing what she do- Maybe she's doing it for game. Um I think it's weird. I don't know why she's yeah, all of a sudden attracted to Rams. Not that you couldn't be attracted to him. He's a nice guy, but what the hell? Weird. I don't like Ramsey because he cries a lot and he needs to stop crying. And Eric loves a crying man. And I like when guys cry. It def I like it on the show, but something about Ramsey's cry, it's just so whiny and it's about like a thing, like, oh I'm playing a game, then stuff is happening while I'm playing this game. Like shut up. <laughs> I think there's a time to cry when it's manly and cool, and it's time to cry when it's not manly and cool. He just seems to cry over everything all the time. Like, what's your problem? Like, you have a great life. You've got a great family. 
fucking crying about all the time. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're allowed to curse. Go ahead. You're allowed to curse. Oh my god, one. I love you. Do you you're... do you think that Maddie is playing a game? Um, like playing the game poorly on purpose in hopes that maybe it's gonna get her dragged to the end of the game. I don't know what the hell she's thinking. Honestly, I need to talk to her. I was hoping she was going to get evicted so that I could be like, what are you doing? Um, she may be doing that. Honestly, Maddie from the get-go has always said she was going to sell a bit. She didn't want to be there, blah, blah, blah. Even though she tried out four years in a row. I don't understand what she's thinking there. I do love Maddie, but I don't know what the hell she's thinking, to be real. She's she's weird now. <laughs> her, her HOH was baffling to me because... I mean, like or love Levita, the two of them were working for the same common goal. And at this point in the game where their numbers are so large and so hard to control tightly, getting rid of someone with your goal never made sense. Like, and I kind of understood Dallas's point of being so angry with her because that was the number. Like, if you want to get rid of her when the numbers dwindle and you don't need her on your side so much, then yeah, get rid of her like so you can win the 100K. But this was the wrong week for this move. And I just, I could never understand it because the girl on girl hate in this house this year has just been so insane. Like you guys drop like flies and my poor draft picks are just dying. <laughs> so I'm like, I kind of want Maddie to leave this week, but I'm like, she's in my pool, and I'm like, I, I need Dallas to stay, because I need Team Hot to take their first hit. There you <laughs> yeah, well, we will say, and I will tell you this, everyone, this is, and you can even see on the thing, I did it wrong, so no, I'm going to preface this by saying, Mitch is not HOH, none of us have any clue who the HOH is, <laughs> it was the graphic from last week that I messed up, but this was kind of our uh, draft, Christine, of who Dana picked, and she did pick you. She picked you. She, you were in her draft pick. I just picked all hot guys. That was my whole strategy. And then Johnny uh, from last season as well. But that was our uh, draft uh, picks from last week. I have finally taken my first hit uh, in losing Dallas, though, yeah. this week, which so was. So now little... we're just waiting to see if um, Johnny or I get a person back. So I need, I need, I need Levita back in that house so bad. I'd like to see her if anybody myself. Yeah. yeah wanted to stir up some crap. I like stirring up the crap. Exactly. So then we go into Vito with this rainbow psychedelic rainbow ball toss <laughs> type of thing and uh Dallas had a bit of a temper tent. Does he have a temper? Like I haven't seen Dal Dallas with a like a temper temper. I mean I know he's aggressive and I know he's like in your face but I'd never seen him get angry like that before and like take it out on poor Trevor Boris's no, finally he's, crafted he's two competition. Years besides Tim, and he has temper tantrums all the time. He has little spazzes. He, you know, throws his pillow around, or he kicks his comforter, <laughs> or whatever it is. We all have spazzes in the house. That house makes you spaz. Um, but he definitely has a short. It's short though. It's short lived. He'll have a little spaz, and then he'll get back into reality. And oh yeah, that's what he did. Thing too, if I was him, and probably worse. So. I was all for just drawing the set. Go for it, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel bad because I'm like, poor Trevor. Like, he, he worked so hard. <laughs> and then, like, Tim was destroying his baseball one. And, and now <laughs> Dallas is ripping apart his rainbows. I'm like, oh. I and don't like, know if we're allowed to talk about Trevor. <laughs> He's the set designer. That's true. He's in the credits of the show. Yeah, the That's credits. the set designer. He's, do okay. he's no... I didn't even he's, know who that was, so there you go. <laughs> oh. Oh, um, the that comp, uh, Leslie in the chat room says that comp hurt my eyes. I think it's I think it's really funny. And, you know, Dana has this amazing theory that I am now convinced is true. And it is that Arissa wears an outfit on the live show to mimic the person that is evicted that week. Like it. I. It, like let me, it's let me explain christine we, yeah. when we had Paige. she was wearing that blue young flirty um flowy number like, okay. with, with the with the sleeves and Paige was evicted then week two she was wearing this sexy sleek purple outfit 
Shari was ex- evicted. Week three, she's wearing like this, like 50s yep. housewife thing, and you're evicted. Week four, it was she was kind of looking like a mixture of a Maddie and Levita. And then week five, like in like last week's show, they're like, well, what are they going to wear if Dallas ever gets evicted? I'm like, I don't know, a wife beater. And then look what she came out looking like that. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, Maybe you're into something there. Who knows? The big brother is always watching. I think I am convinced. I am convinced that you are uh, that you're onto something. Did with you it. even put it together until I or did you have to wait till I told you? Uh, uh, we had to wait. I mean, we had to wait until uh, like when you saw her come out on on the TV. Did you notice it right away, or did you wait until I was like? Did you notice the white beater dress? Oh no, I we didn't notice it until you, until you tweeted <laughs> it out and reminded us. But I'm gonna nail down Arissa with this. I think it has to be a thing. Their big brother is like giving us. It's like the mole. My <laughs> my <laughs> my point was, I have many conspiracies about Big Brother Canada. One of them is they are copying from RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know if you watch that show, Christine, but I swear every week the challenge on that show, it seems like then Big Brother Canada happens and it somehow mimics it. So if if people are watching that are fans of both shows, you'll know on Monday night we had the neon challenge on RuPaul's Drag Race, and then on Big Brother Canada we're having the neon POV. It was just very interesting. It was weird. I tweeted that out too. I was like, what conspiracies. Make, make you go. Hmm. Hmm. Um. All right. Go ahead, Dana. All right. Then we get our we get our we get a look into um the secret suite, and we see um kelsey and levita now we saw when they went in on last thursday it was chilly between the two of them there was a definite ice in the air and you needed a sweater and then you like fast forward a few days and they're best friends and i'm like what a difference a few days and not being in the pressure cooker of big brother can make like the two of them seem to have battled like battled out their demons i mean they there were some tense moments in that room over the course of the week, but they seem to have powered through it and are now kind of BFFs. And I'm I'm glad. I don't know. What do you think of the Kelsey Levita feud? You know, I mean, you're stuck in a room with somebody for a week, solid. Every day feels like three or four days. So you really don't have a choice but to get along. I mean, that's the way the facts are. You're there. The game is over for you both. You can talk about stuff that isn't going to be detrimental for the other one so of course they're going to become bffs i mean i'm sure even i will like to be to maybe outside the house (laughs) (laughs) well she was your vote to go back in if you had a pick you so you got to kind of like well you said you liked her game play you know um at first i hated her game and then i started to you know learn you know what i could probably be in alliance with the vida especially since we are known as hating each other and i think that would be a great little secret if nobody would know yeah you guys tried that a little bit at the end of your campaigning and i wish would have probably um, talked about that further yeah like i wonder if you had started that kind of thinking maybe a few days ahead and it kind of marin because i think Levita and Kelsey are both, I think, processors, and they both need time to, like, let things sink in. So I think, had, like, maybe you would have given Levita even 24 more hours to let that marinate in her brain, and she probably would have found a way to work with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she had already agreed with it, and I talked to her a few days before the actual eviction about that, so I don't know. Um, like, just to, like, just to make it work and, like, figure out how to make it work and stuff like that. Because, like, I know Kelsey did not look even remotely interested in coming back into that game when Arissa announced the fake double eviction. But then by, like, give her 24, 48 hours, and then she was all kind of gung-ho about it. Like, I think both of these two need just need time to let things kind of sink in and figure out how to do it and... Yeah, I think that's always the way with Big Brother. I mean, when you're in the house, it's very intense. When you're out of the house, it does take a couple of days to kind of think about things. And they had that luxury to do that and then go back in. So they're going to have a big advantage, whoever gets back in there, to have that time away. And it's like, you know, in a, in a relationship, you take a step back for a minute and you're like, okay, I can assess this on a yeah. real level. Then do I want to go back in? And if I do, I'm going to go back in with a different attitude or a different um, perspective and I think that they're really lucky to have that both whoever gets in is I'm jealous bitches 
Let, yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Christine. I think this is the only, um, let's say, bad question, and you don't even have to answer it if you don't want to answer it. Um, a lot of people that are, let's say, being critical of your game say that maybe you didn't do enough when you were in the house or you didn't game as hard as you could have um, gamed while you were in there. Do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. Not just because I'm me, but because <laughs> honestly, I, um, I was playing the game. Everything I said and did, I was playing the game. When I was negative about the game or the house, the people, it was because I wanted to make everybody else negative about it too. I wanted people to be angsty and angry in the house and not want to be there as much as possible. Um, so that was a strategy. I was cleaning a lot. That was my also my strategy. I was doing a lot of things that were strategic. You know, people would come and say, oh, you know, let's talk game or whatever. And I'd be like, ah, I don't really want to talk to you right now. That was my game. I was telling them that because I didn't want them to think I was playing a game that. Um, so everything I did was strategic. Um, you just didn't know it. I was just that good. <laughs> in hindsight, I definitely, yeah, I definitely, um, I would have said to Levita at, when I was on the blog, let Dallas use the POV and then let's put Mitch up beside Cassandra. If you really want Cassandra up, nobody's going to vote Mitch out at that time. Let's do it. Let's get it over with. And um, that would have been where I would have done something different. Uh, well, I got one just since we're saying Cassandra, and then I'll throw it back to you, Dana. I, we got a good question from Bigzilla um, about uh, Cassandra in the house. Do you think, Christine, that Cassandra is milking her POV injury? Oh, yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, I had, as you know, well, maybe you don't know, but I had a very serious fall in the challenge of mine, the Allegiance, which was really bad. And I was really seriously hurt. Cassandra, you know, she's all of a sudden had this sprained ankle. And I was like, really, is this? I think she was milking it. I think she did actually sprain it at maybe, but she definitely was milking that, I think, especially when I was in the house. She was trying to outdo my injury. <laughs> Look at poor Nick. Well, she picks, she picks and chooses when she wears that boot. Like, she had high heels on for the addiction and doesn't seem to bother her when she's doing a challenge. Correct. But then every now and then you see that boot on her foot. And then all of a sudden she was limping take your pick which one is it gonna be <laughs> are you not her i love cassandra i got along with her really well in the house she reminds me of a old friend of mine which is just as nuts and crazy and i love that about her she's just sick and twisted i love people like that but she started to get on my nerves game wise she's just really really hustles it so <laughs> she um a, a people in the chat room i don't want to ignore them they are saying um they did see your fall they are glad that you um that you seem to be doing better now from it and i just want to save a lot of people time in the chat room we're getting a ton of questions um about stuff we can't answer. So just know, uh, no, Christine can't tell you what happens when the feeds are off or if they know if the feeds are off or what happens when the cameras are on. We can't a answer any of those questions. We're sorry. We'd love to. Maybe Christine will come back in a year and two months and then she can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> then, then she'll let us know. Okay, I have go a ahead. feeling that when she's allowed to speak, she will she will fill us in on everything she can. So, so this uh, this episode we have Emmett come back into the house and he goes into the oh god this ears please um, the secret suite and he gives um, Kelsey and Levita a little bit of advice and I found it kind of funny. He was like, "You need to be more social." and I mean, the long and short of Kelsey was, you need to be stop being such a cold bitch. <laughs> like he was like, you need to be warm and inviting, and <laughs> it was like, whoa, Emmett, like, you're not give holding advice, back. Give advice when you're on the outside, always. I mean, I give advice to people all the time. Do I ever take my own? Fifty percent yeah, of the yeah. time. So it's easy to give the advice, but when you're in the house with the dynamics of the people, it's different every time with Big Brother. And that's why I love Big Brother, because it's never the same, even though it's the same. Every person is different. Every dynamic is different. Every group is different. So you can say one thing, and yeah, some of that advice is okay, and some of it isn't. Some of it applies, and some of it doesn't. So it's just fun to have him in the house. I mean, I was calling, calling um, Jared Emmett for the first week. I, I couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around it, so to see the two of them together in the house would have been hilarious. Yeah, because it's kind of funny. Like, I mean, they do this challenge where they have to hide the poker chips and 
then they have to go in and turn the house upside down. You're cleaning little feelers must have been just going crazy watching them destroy this house trying to find these chips the one time i said to myself i wouldn't want to be in the house at this point (laughs) but nikki's face nikki's face was priceless like so levita's team wins and they get to have a party with emmett in the high roller room and as punishment um, kelsey's team has to clean up the mess and poor nikki is on kelsey's team and the The faces she's pulling are just, I love that girl's faces. Like I could just have her face. Like you just need a Nikki cam like 24 hours a day just to catch her faces because they're so great. She's extreme in every way. (laughs) When she's happy and when she's sad, it's so extreme. It's great. She's she's, she's something else. She's so sweet. Like you just want to keep her in your pocket. Like you just want to put her in your pocket and carry her around. She's that small. She's tiny. Like I'm pretty small. But yeah. she makes me look like a giant. I mean, she is tiny, teeny, tiny. She is like a little pixie. I mean, she must weigh 90 pounds. Yeah, like- I saw her in the audience. I was in the audience the week that they went in. So, I, I yeah, she's just this itty-bitty little tiny thing. Yeah. And uh, so Ramsey, of course, takes himself down because who wouldn't? And um, now Maddie has to go up. So now Maddie's crying and Ramsey's consoling Maddie. And it's... I don't know what Ramsey's doing. Like I, I, I keep being like, w- step away from Maddie. Like she's killing your game. She's killing your game. Like she's p- taking your head off and just step away. And like, he kind of like, and Tim gives him the HOH room for a night too. And it's like, he won't even kiss her because he doesn't want his mom to see, which is funny. Or is he playing her? Sorry. I don't know. I said, or is he playing her Christine? Or is it all an act? I think that he doesn't want to kiss her. I think he knows what he's doing. I don't think she's fooling him by any means whatsoever. And he's just saying that because for an excuse. Believe me, if I was in the bed with Ramsey and wanted to kiss him, there'd be some lip blocking. <laughs> <laughs> well, she did. Like, she did move in for like that one when she was like, uh, 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 whatever. I, I don't know with him because it's like, on one, like, you know, his DRs are telling us one thing, but his actions are telling us another. Like, why didn't you keep Dallas? Like, He's hard to read. I always thought Ramsey was very difficult to read. He was the kind of guy that would only be in a room at 10 minutes at a time. Like He would just keep going from room to room to room. He'd never commit to anything or talk to anybody in a real way or in an extreme game way. So I still don't know what he's doing, and he may be playing the best game yet. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, I don't know he needs to go. I can't watch the crying. I can't. I can't. I can't. I think Miss Don Draper in the chat room earlier said he needs a shirt made out of Kleenex. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he does. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, so we get to the we get to the eviction. I think we've had the first aggressive speeches, mm-hmm. except for yours, Christine. Your speech was pretty good too. Like most people are just like, oh, keep me if you want, blah blah blah. Like okay, they don't I really just say that. For five minutes, I'm at a. Um... I'm at a place that needs the computer for a minute. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Log off and we'll and then we'll have you come back. Um all right. So, Dana, you stand by. Well, uh will we wait for Christine to come back? Let me move this over. I'll see if I can pull up Dana with me. So we're taking a break. We're taking a momentary break. Christine does not have a computer. And um, she had to go to uh, another location in order to be able to do the show. Yeah, uh, sh- n- sure. D- I don't think anybody can hear you yet, so you gotta wait a second. There's a lot of stuff happening right now. (laughs) I wasn't prepared for Christine to leave, so everybody has to hold on one minute. Everybody gotta hold on. Let me bring Dana back up here. Um, but um, but um, but um, okay. Boop, Dana's back. Okay, so yes, Dana, go ahead. Start with the questions. Someone was asking why the feeds are down and blah, blah, blah. And I think it's because... Um. Uh, they still by the time I had left the studio last night they still hadn't decided on who was going back in and Arissa kind of has to wait around and um, 
stuff like that. So I think they just wanted, and they're not going back into the house until Sunday. And I think they wanted that, that aspect of this show to be a surprise, which is why they've shut the feeds down for the weekend. So that, cause they do go, they did go back in last night at some point. So mm-hmm. they don't want, they don't want us to know yet. Like that's, I think they just, they just want it to be a surprise. And yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. I yeah. think they just want it to, um, I think they just want it to be a surprise. Um, and I don't think the house guests would know when the feeds are down or not. I think they kind of keep them just right. assuming that they are up all the time so that. Right. Um, they want they it to be a act, surprise. So they don't act any different. Mm-hmm. Like... Um, well, what was the other question that I saw a lot of people asking? I don't remember. What happens if they all don't agree? That's what was going to be one of yeah, my questions for. Um, that was going to be one of my questions. Uh, what you guys both thought? Maybe wait to answer that until. Who was that finding me first in the audience last night? I think it was actually you, Sherry. It might have been. It might have. You been. and Jessica were like neck and neck with that. Probably. So I think it was Sherry this this time. I can show some of the pictures now that I have found. Here was our, and another reason you should be watching this show live um, or watching the video version, not just the audio. So here is our uh, Dallas package photo. Mm -hmm. Um, I can also say, oh, well, here's a little bit of Ramsey crying, as always, like what we've been talking about. Uh, (laughs) So much happening on the show. Uh, Here is your, here's my favorite Nikki face, Dana. This is my favorite Nikki face. Uh Uh, I, well, I mean, we can all appreciate the troll and the, and the, uh, and the contorting. I appreciated the shawl and the dramatics of it all. You know, I like. I like when she smiles, actually. Like, my favorites are when she actually generally just has, like, a smile on her. Like, she's so pretty. And when she's when she has, like, a genuinely happy face, she's so pretty. Like, I just, I like when she smiles. I think she should smile more often. I think so, too. Um, did you tweet out any, like, clear picture of you in the audience, Dana? Did I tweet any? Yeah, like if I went to your, I guess I we don't didn't have that tweet picture. Any, um, okay, well I can't show that then. Um, Ramsey should get Puffs Plus or a Kleenex commercial. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, I'm trying to go back and see. Uh, oh, here, here is a good Nikki face. You'll appreciate this one, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one's funny. Everybody has to do a shot. Uh, whenever uh, Nikki. That was the one that. Yeah, that's the one she found when she uh, found out she had to clean. Mm-hmm. My favorite was when she had her leg up and in her arm. Yes, redheaded Michelle. And um, by the way, redheaded Michelle and Virgo Baker. Spoiler alert. Um, if you recall, our interview uh, with Christine did not get posted last week. Uh, It will be posted later on tonight, and Christine answers your question, Virgo Baker, and yours, Redheaded Michelle. Um, So when that one gets posted later tonight, and it's on video, it's not even audio, we actually obviously asked her before the show. So you can watch her reaction (laughs) to uh, your questions later when that posts, and uh, the audio from Dallas uh, interview is up already on the website. Yes, my computer didn't freak out this week, so we got an interview. Yes. You know, I'm surprised, Dana, since we're waiting for Christine. Maybe, I hope this doesn't mess up if I hang up on her. Hopefully it's not going to mess you up. But apparently I wasn't hung up on her. Um, Okay. Uh, We didn't talk about the fact that when they had to hide all the chips in the house, uh, the love of your life was on. The love of my life? I thought you love him. No. No. Oh, you don't love him? No, I'm not. I don't hate Emmett, but I was. I never drank the Emmett Kool Aid. Oh, there we go. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to hold so, on. Fix it. Yeah, ya. I was never a huge. I didn't like that showman's very well. Like he was in a showman's with a girl, and they they basically just kept alternating H O H week after week. It wasn't fun to watch, and he seemed. Um, 
very possessive and I mm. just, I don't know. But now that Christine's not here, there's one thing I want to bring up that I can't believe Big Brother's actually letting happen. And I put the picture in the file. I don't know if you have it. It's a picture of Dallas with a water bottle. I saw it. Hold on. Um, okay, here we go. Dallas, water bottle, boom. That water bottle has every single head of household listed on it. Every competition. Oh, that's cheating. Yeah, I'm surprised Big Brother. Oh, wait a minute. Christine, are you back? Oh, wait, maybe Christine's, maybe Christine's coming, coming back. back. Okay, sorry, guys. Okay, hold yeah. on. Boop a boop. Christine's back. <laughs> Hi, Christine. No problem. Thanks. We were. Sorry that I don't have my proper computer, so I had to borrow one. And uh... we filled everybody in. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> no worries. You know what? Every you know what you all can do. This is a great time for everyone to go and tweet out the show. As a matter of fact, um, well, we have about fifteen minutes left. Um. Everybody that tweets out uh, the show tonight, I will pick someone uh, to win a prize, whoever shares the show and tweets it. So you guys got about 15 more minutes left on that. We were just discussing, Christine, the fact, and I don't know, this is on the show, isn't it, Dana? This was on the show. I pulled this picture off the feeds. I don't know. That's fine. Feeds is good enough. Dallas had a cup, plus he's gone, with... But the and cup is still in the house. The that cup is in the house, and it is basically showing who was HOH. Uh, like what the comp was. Seems the, like the that's bottle. cheating. Well, is it? I mean, I don't know. Everybody was trying to remember everything, and he said, screw it, I'm going to write this down. So we wrote one was the one night stand, two, et cetera, et cetera. I thought it was a great idea. Whenever I needed to know something, I would just go to his water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That would never fly in BBUS at all. Uh, I don't know why he's getting away with it. I thought that maybe, you know, they would get him in trouble for it, but. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And someone was saying, well, they have the noodles with the house names. I'm like, yeah, but that's not helping them remember anything. That's like just so that they can visualize strategy and who's where and like. You mm -hmm. know, like that's not competitions, and like I'm surprised there's not a veto bottle and a have not bottle. And well, I mean, whatever, if he can get away with it, it's really detrimental to his game, though, because then anybody else can see too. So he's helping everybody else remember so exactly. It wasn't so much a Dallas, I, I was just astounded that Big Brother didn't <laughs> smuggle that water bottle out when it started happening. Like, that's we'll see. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let us, Dana, quickly, because then we can just kind of focus on um, questions for Chris Dean at the end. Let's just finish wrapping up last night's episode where, um, like we said, or you go ahead, I'll let you yeah. do it, Dana. Go I was ahead. just kind of at the speeches because that was kind of what intrigued me. Like, we had some pretty aggressive speeches from both of them. Maddie just saying Dallas is a liar and Cassandra, your ass is grass, may the best bitch win. And I'm like, I wasn't impressed with Maddie's speech too much because she was supposed to be friends with Dallas and like you're sitting there calling your alliance member a liar like to his face sitting right beside him like I was like I, I don't like that um you can campaign and do whatever but you don't need to be like that way and then Dallas was like I love you all but I want um Raul and Jared's head on a spike and I'm like and then god bless I'm like wow like that just went from like a thousand different ways of crazy, but at least he wasn't like, he could have like went all kinds of places with Maddie for betraying their trust and stuff like that. And he took the high road there. So I don't know. What did you think of their speeches? It was a little crazy. For me. Dallas, Dallas speech, you know, he's very theatrical and dramatic. So it was fitting. And like you said, he didn't really put anybody down. We all knew that he wanted Jared. Yeah. It was no big deal. It was funny. It was cute. It was true. Um, Maddie, yeah, I, I didn't agree with her speech putting down Dallas at all. I thought that was rude. Um, I don't know what she was thinking. Honestly, I don't know what's gotten into her. If she just doesn't care. She wants to be voted out or she wants to go down swinging or thinking that she's making big moves or is she's just doing it for drama effect. I don't know. It wasn't that great. I mean, I agree with Dallas being the gentleman that he always is. Dallas is always 
the gentleman and he always takes the nice road and I, I appreciate that he doesn't lash back at her and that's not his style anyways. Exactly. So five to three vote, Dallas has been off, evicted. Right? Our first man bites the dust. Yeah. And which is sad because out of all the men. I, I know. I am not just I am not just saying this to disagree with both of you. I wasn't a fan of Dallas. <laughs> I was not a big Dallas fan. No. I wasn't at first either. Like and like even like going in, like I mean when our cast recap was like, oh, I don't know about him. Like he he could be douchey. Like he's got the potential to be a douche, just like just from like his package or whatever. Like that's all we were going on was like this minute video. And and then like he came in and I was like, oh wow, this guy's the first thing he did was make drinks for people. And I'm like, if he can keep that game up and be that guy, he's going to go far. And then he kind of went well, partying in a jar and like some questionable moments. But like when he talked game and his strategy was sound, and that was the part of Dallas that I could get behind was the, the game player of Dallas. Cause he always had a, a good head on his shoulder and like his, his reasons were sound and it was never crazy and he was loyal and that's that's the Dallas. I don't so much like the fart in a jar and wear a bikini to a veto meeting kind of Dallas, but Alyssa um, Hansen in the chat room says Dallas crying was actually really heartbreaking. I wasn't a fan of him, but as a fan of the game, I'd probably um, feel the same way in his situation. Now that was, that's the crying man I thought you would like. No, hated it. Hated it. However, however, I'll tell you what I felt bad about Dallas for is when Arissa was basically like, okay, so just so you know, LaVita and Kelsey are still playing this game and then shows them their picture. Oh, they're in the secret suite. And Zida, I was just waiting. Like, I just wanted to see that moment when she turned and went, uh, and you're not going back in. <laughs> she made him, it, she made it seem like he was going to have a chance to fight to go back in too. And nope. Not that you. was a bitchy move on Arissa's part, not gonna lie. That well, was that's a script writers, come on. No, <laughs> I mean, obviously it's not her, it's <laughs> writers, but I'm saying, big brother, that was mean. It's like, oh here, Dallas, guess what? You're out, and one of the girls gets to go back in. Ha <laughs> mm-hmm. ha. He handled it with class though. He handled it with class. Well, of course he did, because he's Dallas, but um, I, I would have d- been like, that's nice, nice rubbing in the salt into the wound. <laughs> I give him that. I give Dallas. De- Dallas definitely um, is classy. I 100% give him that. We saw um, LaVita and Kelsey trying to get back in the house um, and obviously telling everyone, yeah. like, let us come in. Of course, Rail had his reaction, uh, which I wasn't surprised about. that's the about. Nikki I like. Who's yeah, that's the Nikki I like, too. Smiling Nikki. My... But- Let's just talk about Mitch for a second, though, because the camera went to Mitch a lot as he watched these girls. And you could see Mitch is going, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like, you could just see him piecing together every, like, part of his game just colliding in that room and just going, whoosh. Everybody's was. Everybody was (laughs) freaking out. Everybody was. But Mitch had the two sides, and they were kept pretty separate till those two girls got in that room, and he's sitting there going, oh, God, like, I know they're going to talk about this, and there goes my game. Like, there goes my undercover game. Completely. XOXO uh, Feedsters in the chat room says, Mitch definitely puked last night. (laughs) I think he did more than puke. He probably, he probably did a lot more than. Yeah. uh, But... uh, the girls' speeches, like, who did you think did the better speech? Like, there was Levita and the, now I love Kelsey, and Kelsey and I have put our differences together, and I'm a changed player, versus the Kelsey's, I have unbreakable bonds in the house. Now, if I'm sitting in that house listening to the I'm a changed player versus a, I have so many friends in that house, I'd be like, um, let's bring in the changed player, because I'm never going to break the bonds. Definitely agree with you on that. Kelsey, I think, put her own foot in her mouth there is by saying that, like, hello, we voted you out for that reason, and now you're telling us you have stronger bonds, and 
why would we want to vote you back in? LaVita at least was smart enough to say, I've changed my game. I'm ready for, for anything. Anybody can align with me or not align with me. That was a smarter choice for sure. But but then the funniest was part was because like literally like 10 minutes after Maddie just tells Cassandra her ass is grass, they're like, we have to work together to get LaVita out. And then like Tim and Phil's reaction to that was just, that was like the best part of the show for me with them in the bathroom going, what? Just happened. Yeah. <laughs> I loved how um, Kelsey was like, I'm open to work with anybody. I'm completely open, as is my shirt. And here are my breasts if you bring me back, Jared. And then you just see him like, like I, I he was terrified. I go back to what I originally said, him watching. Here's a picture of it. He had his hand over his mouth. His leg was shaking the entire time. And he was like, please don't be Kelsey. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. He want her back in the house. Forget it. He's over it. He's done with her flirting just like everybody else is. Here is a question um, from Robert Zuckerman again, a real question. Um, he wants to know, were you nervous at all about being on television when you first went into the house? Absolutely not. I don't get nervous about stuff like that. I'm there to do it. I'm, I've already made the commitment, so I don't think about anything else. As a matter of fact, I kept forgetting I was on TV and people kept trying to remind me, Christine, do you remember you're on TV? That's probably why I looked like crap most of the time because I really didn't care. Um, and I forgot, honest to God, I forgot about the live feeds and everything. I only dressed up when it was like actual camera time, like non-animations and POVs and ceremonies and stuff. What, what did your kids think of your, um, time in the house? What was their reaction to? They thought it was great, but not long enough, obviously. Oh, well, yeah. You get the $10,000 for the brick. <laughs> exactly. Like, were they, did they ever think, mom, why'd you do that? Mom, like, why'd you say that? Like used to my antics so they've been dealing with this crap for 47 years well 28 25 years <laughs> so they're completely used to my silliness my having to make excuses for mom um i am sick and twisted in the chat room says uh the fact the only reason that nikki voted dallas out was because maddie said she would go after cassandra which was going back kind of to the point that we said before and then with tim um calling it out i was a little surprised that um the edit last night kind of made it seem like Ramsey was the deciding vote in who was going to end up going out, where I think a lot of the people watching the feeds kind of know it all really came down to Nikki. Um, so I kind of thought that, that was a little bit interesting on the feeds versus what they showed on the show. But that's also why you really need to watch the feeds, too, because you get yeah. to make your own storylines. <laughs> Yeah, Nikki, uh, yeah, poor Dallas. He thought, he really thought going into that vote that he had um, four votes. So when he kind of knew when she said five to three that mm -hmm. it was him going home, like he, he was like, it really sucks that my, uh, my fate came down to the most unpredictable care, like player in the game. And Virgo Baker in the chat room wants to know if you watch the feeds, Christine. I would watch the feeds, but that's why I'm borrowing somebody's computer. My computer is so old that I can't update it to anything. So watching feeds is really hard for me. But I do watch them sometimes, occasionally, but when I'm at somebody else's house. Do you have an iPad, an iPhone, an iDevice? Phone. <coughs> I think you can watch yeah. them on an iPhone. Or you could always maybe put that uh, brick furniture on eBay and autograph it. <laughs> and then buy yourself a computer. <laughs> well, it's in the works. Trust me. Tim told me a lot of good little tricks. Oh, oh, believe me. I'm sure Tim knows those tricks. Um, uh, Dana, do you have any final uh, thoughts, any final questions for Christine? No, I just, I'm really excited to see who goes in the house. I, I mean, for my cool reasons, I want Levita to go in there, but I don't, I'm just, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm good. Well, this Chris 
Christine, you have, we, it is unfortunate that we have to wrap it up, but you have had thousands of people uh, watching you live right here. You have tons of fans. Um, what do you want to say to your fans and the people that um, have supported you and are still supporting you right now? I love fans. I love people that support me. They get me. You know what? Not everybody gets me. I'm kind of an in-person experience. I'm very hard to experience out of person. And I appreciate that people can see through crap and still like me. I'm pretty likable. So um, I like that. And uh, for the negative people, everybody's going to be negative. As, as far as I'm concerned, um, it's all part of it. And you can't have the negative without the positive. And sometimes the negative cracks me up. So I like it. Good. And tell the people where they can find you on social media or how you uh, want them to interact with you. Sure. Well, you can always do the Twitter thing. I've just learned about this whole Twitter thing and I'm kind of getting to be a Twitter bug. So uh, you can obviously do that through, um, uh, if you don't like. Christine, it's right below you, Christine, uh, at Christine BB Can, or if you guys are watching this back on the website, uh, the links to all Christine's um, stuff will be below this video. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Christine. We really had a great time um, chatting with you. Yes, can't wait to talk more. We yes. will. We will talk more. We will see you on finale night. Yes, yes. I can't wait to redo everybody and see everybody and slap some people. <laughs> it is going slap to some be. Yes, yeah, slap some people. Well, hopefully, we will get to see you in the backyard. All right, I'm going to um, I'm going to hang up on you, Christine. But we will follow back up with you in a little bit uh, later tonight. Okay. okay Thanks so much, Christine. Bye. Okie dokie. All right. Let me bring back Jaina and then chat room. We will talk to you guys. Um, we will talk to you guys a little bit and see what you guys are doing and thinking about what's going on in the house. Let me just uh, get Dana back here. Hold on. I'm just going to hang up on both of you. <laughs> I just hung up. There, I swear. Well, we'll talk more uh, when we're not live anymore. So hold on, chat room. I'm going to bring Dana back on, and then I am going to, uh, then we'll hang out with the live uh, chat room. Oh, don't even get me started. Hold on. I know. Welcome back, Dana. Um, okay, so Dana, any, do you guys in the chat room have, let's start here. Do you guys in the chat room uh, have any questions for Dana and I? I know, Virgo Baker, you were saying, um, what do you, why do we think the feeds are down? I think it's just because they have to hold it for the show. And I know a lot of you are asking, what if the vote is not unanimous? Um, we don't know. Yeah, it's going to be like jury, I guess. You got to be unanimous or you don't go in here. Like, I feel bad. Like, are they going to put Arissa in the secret suite until they come up with a decision? Because she's got to be there for them to tell. Like, mm -hmm. so. yeah, it it's going to it's going to be interesting. It really, um, yeah, there is a vote. Actually, if you go to your real, uh, not your reality caps. Oh, if you go to um the big brother dot Canada dot ca website there is a vote going on who would you rather see so i don't know if they're going to be like if they can't make a decision if that's the deciding factor that we help them out that's what i thought too i kind of thought could that be why they're doing that but doing that vote how long did it take them to leave the suite and make it just only a couple of minutes Fun well, fact. hold. Uh, thank you for that answer, Dana. Hold those questions for one minute until we officially end the show. <laughs> Let's hold those questions until we end the recorded HD version. Uh, <laughs> let's let's wrap up with this. Say there. We'll answer. I mean, we won't answer. Uh, Dana. All right. You know what? We're just going to wrap up the show. This is a reason why all of you should watch our shows live over on you now at you now dot com uh, slash reality recaps and become a fan. But if you like this and want to ask your own questions where nothing has to be filtered, check out your reality recaps dot com slash Canada and help Dana and I get to that backyard um, interviews so that we can live stream them for you, take your guys' questions live. Plus, not just that, 
We'll be doing red carpet stuff. We'll be doing stuff on finale night. Because backyard, unlike our big brother, backyard interviews are not finale night. They are the next day. But we get to, like, go on the stage on finale night. We do get to talk to the winner on finale night that we can stream. And we're going to give away prizes to people that donate and take their questions and stuff. So check it out. YourElderRecaps.com slash Canada. Dana, where can they read your amazing blogs and see all of our previous shows? At yourrealityrecaps.com slash bbcan. And where can they find you on the Twitter, Dana? On the Twitter, you can twit me at dgoodyear1975. Perfecto. And you guys already know the deal. Wherever. Five stars. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Oh, and before we go, I just want to give a shout out to my friend Jackie. She's just started watching the show and she's so excited that I'm on here and she thinks I'm really cool now. So, yeah. Well, la di da. We're not going anywhere. No, she didn't watch it live. We're we're going to the after show now. So, if you want to participate in the after show, you have to watch us do these live on uh, unan.com slash reality recaps. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, Our interview with Dallas and Christine will be up in a little bit. Bye, everybody.